when we're first presented with our map, what we see is the main map data, title, legend, the position of our mouse on the screen in longitude and latitude, a scale, and the navigation controls. We're able to navigate around our map in two ways. Firstly, we can double tap on the screen, allowing us to zoom in, and then we can drag the map around by clicking, holding, and moving the mouse. The other method of navigating through the map is using the navigation toolbar on the left hand side. We can choose to zoom in to known distances or alternately using the plus and minus functions. We can also move using the arrow keys. So we're going to set our sight above Port Al Prince. The map currently shows the site suitability data overlaid with roads. What we can do is turn off the roads and natural features in the water and we can look at some of the component layers for the map which is the road distance, the so distance from the roads and city distance with the same information. One of the great functions of this map is the ability to show where the existing camps were in relation to the real data. If we turn on the existing camps layer we notice that these positions correlate well with the positions of high suitability as indicated in the map. One of the functions here is the ability to select a point and for the attribute information to be displayed below. If we zoom down slightly and we look through, it gives us the name of the camp, the position, the date was formed, settlement type and a number of statistics and features about the camp. If we return to our original map, we can then zoom out the position that we think is suitable. One of the great functions about this map is the ability to be printed onto an A4 piece of paper so that it can be used away from technology. If we ask the document to print, and in this case it is a PDF document, a PDF document is created which could then be used by the responders to take away from the operations centre and utilised in the field. So I'll save it and that should produce for us a PDF with space below for additional information to be added. So, the second part of the demonstration, we're going to look at how a web or desktop based client can access the data on the server with the ability to update the content. In this case we're going to be looking at the cam camps layer. So we'll add a double FSS there. We have the disaster set up and this is simply using the WFS request and the password and username for the server. So this can create some sort of protection on what data we've uploaded and downloaded. When we connect to the uh, server, we're presented with the various data layers going to use export output to our camp layer. It's be loaded into quantum GIS when I represent a very basic symbology. We want to edit this data set, so initially we open up this attribute table, we turn on editing, and then with that minimised we can create a new point using the editor toolbar. If you notice the right, right position of our point is indicated so we can make an accurate judgment on where we place it. When we place this point, we're given an attribute table to fill in, so camp name, and so on, and we can then see that in our attribute table as a new entry. And if we want to edit that, we we'll test camp, appropriate latitude and longitude, we then turn off editing and we save. Save then upload to the server. Having carried out the update, when we come back to the web map, we reload it and we zoom back to where we've added the new camp, so just to the west of Port Al Prince. Now that we're here, if we turn on our shelters layer, 
our new shelter camp had appeared. If we select this, the same output table as generated for the other shelter information is created, and we can pan across. And obviously, we didn't add any information at the time, but this could be done. One of the great strengths of the ability to update the website through WFS is it increased the longevity of the program, the ability for new camps to be added or all camps to be removed, and also for the attributes of camps to be updated so that an accurate global picture can always be provided.